Hi, and welcome back to Resplendent Daughter Ministries. Those of you who visit often are probably aware that I write blog posts and then I make vlogs of them, usually several weeks or months later. Well, the post I wrote that I'm vlogging about today, I wrote on Election Day last year. It was a momentous day for sure, and when I wrote the post, I really didn't know what that day was going to bring. The title of the post and the title of this vlog is The Ultimate Sin. Now, you may think that voting for a candidate who is not your choice might be, in the life of someone else, the ultimate sin, but that's not what today's vlog is about. What do you think of when you consider the ultimate sin? Do you think of murder, rape, burglary? All of these are terrible sins. In fact, God says that any sin is terrible. But as horrific as heinous as all of these sins are, and yes, they are heinous, they can all be put under the blood of Christ and forgiven by God. There is one sin, however, which will not. And that's the one this vlog is about. When I was a young parent, well, actually, I was never a young parent. I had my children when I was in my late 30s. But when I was a young parent, when I had young children, I vowed that I would raise them right. After all, I was a Christian of many years, and I had had excellent biblical training. I had wonderful examples in my parents who gave me principles for godly parenting, and I was excited to go out there and follow the proverb which says, train them up in the way they should go, and when they're old, they will not depart from it. That's Proverbs 22, 6, by the way. But around ninth grade, my children stopped listening to me, or my husband, and I was completely flummoxed by this. I kept asking myself, why would God give my children godly parents who know the wisdom of the Bible and then waste that wisdom? To me, it was like wasted wisdom. No, disobeying one's parents is not the ultimate sin. Um, but there are worse feelings than feeling that your children don't respect you. But at the time, I didn't know what those were. It was a pretty awful feeling to know that my children just did not value the things of God. And I guess that's how God has felt with us uh, at various times in our lives. I guess that's how he has felt for millennia, actually. I guess that's how he felt with the Hebrew children, particularly when they were at Kadesh. Now, if you're not familiar with the story at Kadesh, uh, it was there that they so grieved him that he removed his hand of blessing from them. Being wayward is one thing. We all make mistakes. Even those of us who love and follow Jesus uh, as our Savior make mistakes. We choose wrongly. We say unholy things. We think unholy thoughts daily as we struggle with our still present sin natures that coexist with the Holy Spirit inside of us. And we won't be free from that struggle until we leave this world. But when we sin in this manner, there's no doubt that our sin grieves the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Any time we sin, any type of sin. Charles Spurgeon describes this grief not as anger, but as anger tempered with love. Um, when we Christians sin, we quench the fire of the Holy Spirit who lives within us. And this causes the Holy Spirit great sorrow. The remedy is a quick confession of that sin, repentance, forgiveness by our gracious God, and then restoration. Ephesians 4.30 gives us this admonition as Christians. Paul said, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. The ultimate sin is quite something else entirely, however. The ultimate sin is called in the New Testament, blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Now, 
What in the world does that mean? Well, Jesus speaks of this in the book of Matthew, Matthew 12, 22 through 32, and also in Mark chapter 3. In the Matthew passage, Jesus is performing miracles which have been seen by a group of the Pharisees. And along with seeing these miracles, they heard his life-giving words of truth. These men were presented with incontrovertible evidence that Jesus was the Messiah. Yet, you know what they did? They attributed his miracles to Satan. Yes, they accused him of being possessed by demons. And Jesus' response to them was this. He said, I tell you the truth. People will be forgiven of all sins, even all the blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven, but is guilty of an eternal sin. An eternal sin. Calling God a liar by rejecting his offer of salvation, by rejecting him, this is the ultimate sin. The sin with eternal consequences. The sin that will not be forgiven. The sin that sends a person to hell. Unbelief encompasses disobedience. For it is both the refusal or the unwilling failure to trust God and the consequent lack of faithfulness to God. That is a quote from Gareth Lee Cockerell's wonderful commentary, The Epistle to the Hebrews, which I've been quoting from liberally as I've done this study with you for, uh, of the book of Hebrews. But this type of unbelief springs from a rebellious heart. But it becomes real in the concrete act of refusal. This is fatal unbelief. It's eternally fatal. In the USA, several months ago, we had our election day. But that election day on that day was also today. And what we read in our Hebrews text for this blog is Hebrews 3.7 where the writer said, Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Oh, that today you would listen as he speaks. There are some of you watching this video, this vlog, who are rejecting God, and he is pleading with you for your soul. You want no part of him. I beg you to reconsider. Jesus made it plain that the person who rejects him rejects God because Jesus is the one way to heaven. And if a person rejects Jesus, he will not end up in heaven after this physical life ends. Not a single person, not one single person is promised even one more day on this planet. Over the last week, uh, I learned of acquaintances who died almost instantly. Death was not on their agendas that day. No. Uh, it doesn't matter if one was in her 70s or if the other was in his 20s. Thanking God that um, from all I could tell, these friends of mine were believers and they're in heaven right now. And so uh, they are rejoicing with him around the throne of glory. But if you have not made that decision, if you are in the situation where you are rejecting God and his offer of salvation, please don't assume that you will have tomorrow. If you want specific, um, specific guidance on how to accept Jesus as Savior, you can go to the post uh, from which this video was made and you'll find that guidance there. Let's close in prayer. Lord Jesus, I'm so thankful that never, ever again will I have to live one moment apart from you. I am yours and you are mine. Still, my heart breaks for those who are rejecting you, even as you extend the invitation for rescue day after day. The enemy has blinded so many. I pray that your Holy Spirit will not give up on those we love so dearly. 
I plead for them today, Lord God, while they have today. Open their eyes and give them a glimpse of who you really are. Have patience greater than that of any humans, Lord. Please draw them to yourself. Please save them. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for stopping by today. And I hope that you'll settle this momentous decision. Please join me again the next time I'm here with Resplendent Daughter Ministries. Thank you.